Tell Them We Are Rising is the story of, of black colleges and universities. It tells about 150 years of history in 90 minutes. Uh, it goes from the time of uh, African Americans being enslaved when reading and writing was illegal. It was illegal to, to, to learn to read and write. One of the things that the film talks about it is that it was illegal for slave owners to teach their slaves to read and write. Those, there were laws against you teaching somebody to read and write. As, as uh, one woman in the film says, you know, the, it went, you know, this, this is my property. I can do anything I want to my property. I can beat my property, I can rape my property, I can kill my property. The only thing that's against the law is for me to teach my property how to read. And so that's, that's how scary the idea was of an educated, African-American population. So we go from there and, and we tell different stories, seven or eight different stories, leading up into the final chapter of the film, which is a, it's called Today, and it's a, a, about where uh, HBCUs are today. And we profile three or four students who are freshmen at HBCUs. I'm African-American, and I, I'm really interested in, in African-American history and the African-American experience. That's my experience. You know, I mean, I generally believe in, in very general terms that, that people should make films about their own culture, what they know about. Um, you know, I think that because I'm steeped in the African-American community, you know, that I want to hope that at least that my films kind of dive under the surface, that they're not kind of swimming on the top, but that because I'm coming from that culture, I'm diving down into, in, into that culture a little deeper. So, I mean, that's, that's part of the main reason, but, you know, also, that's what I'm interested in. You know, I'm really interested in um, African-American lives and, and, and the lives of myself and, and, you know, my peers and my ancestors. I've been given this great gift and this opportunity to tell certain stories, and I think it would it, it would almost be selfish if I if I told a story that just was about the past. You know, it has no relationship to today. You know, how many films come out every year about African American history? You know, two or three, and and to kind of waste that. Uh, in what I call the historical bubble, you know, that, that those films that are like in a, in a little historical bubble and, you know, you, you see the film and you're like, oh, that was, that was interesting, let me go eat a hamburger. But, you know, I, I, what I'm trying to do is, is make films that have to do um, with today, but are about the past. Well, I, I think that, you know, one of the things that really interests me is, um, you know, um, the institutions that, that help sustain African Americans, you know, or, or change our lives. And, um, you know, I was just thinking about, about what are the important institutions that we have, you know, or had. You know, we had uh, the church, we had newspapers, and we had uh, black colleges, you know, and, and I just thought it was an amazing thing that I didn't see people lining up to make this story. It was not like I had to, you know, f fend off other filmmakers, like, okay, I got that. You know, um, it was something that, that nobody else was really thinking about. Um, and so I thought it was really an important story. You know, what has, what has created or helped create the black middle class in this country more than, than black colleges? I, for me, I don't think there's anything that e even compares black colleges. So I mean, one of the reasons why, why I made this film is my parents both went to HBCUs. My, my mother went to Talladega, mm -hmm. my father went to Howard. My father was from Washington, D.C. He and his brother were the first people in his, in, he and his brother were the first people in his family to graduate high school. My father would have never gone to college if Howard hadn't been there. Um, and he just kind of, you know, stumbled into Howard, where they uh, nurtured him. They told him, you know, look, man, you know, stop goofing around. You're really smart. And so he kind of buckled down, and he went to Howard and went to Howard Dental School and became a dentist, which, you know, changed my life. That's why I'm sitting here today because my father went to Howard. Um, you know, not, not only did it change my life, but it's going to change my kids' lives and their kids' lives and their kids' lives, all down through the generations just because Howard was there for my father to attend in the 1930s.